we're back. Hello, and welcome back to the wonderful vacation town of Hamlet with its lovely swamp and fog brew. Um, Delicious. <laughs> it was. It, it wasn't. It wasn't bad. I mean, no Chardonnay, but you know. It burns going it, it, down. It, it'll do. It'll definitely do. So, when we left, everyone, we were prepared. Uh, the group was preparing to venture into the Hag's Bog. Um, coming into Hamlet, um, they spent the loot, basically, that they got from the Duke on a big old party. And had a couple of pretty good things happen from it. Char got a book that he can barely read about werewolves and they met an elf from the sands named Aseru who has leads to a ruins like a place in the bog where there's promises of treasure and secrets and all sorts of cool stuff so now that I've found hirelings in the book they're, they're extremely easy I knew it was easy I just couldn't find it so, Aseru, I'm going to give you four things, and then I'll say what each of them mean. So if anyone wants to write it down just for um, reference on their notes or whatever. Um, Aseru's cost is uncovered knowledge. She has one loyalty, two tracker, and two warrior. Awesome. And so, the cost is basically what she requires to keep going with you or to, like, to basically help you guys out on what you're doing. Um, after a certain point, if like, the cost hasn't been met, there will be a point where it's like, hey, I, I, we aren't doing what I want to do, so I might leave. I think that loyalty goes down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if the hireling yeah, if the hireling's cost isn't paid regularly, usually once a session, they're liable to quit or turn on their employers. Hmm. Luckily, she's not; she doesn't seem too evil, so she might not turn on you. But you know, who knows? Um, and then loyalty. We didn't secure ourselves against whatever <laughs> being ensorcelled. Right. <laughs> and it's all a trap. She's a witch. Aha. Um. <laughs> so um, the loyalty comes into play. Basically, because you have with a hireling, you have a order hirelings move, and so you can. The hireling is yours to control. It's assumed that when you're out in the in your in the dungeon doing stuff, a hireling will just kind of move around with you, but not really do too much unless you like say, um, I attack the gelatinous cube and Aseru is behind it, also attacking it to help me out. Or and 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 so on. So when basically they're yours to con they're the hirelings are yours to control. When you order them to do something that is dangerous, degrading, or just flat out crazy due to your orders, uh, you roll plus loyalty. And so it's it's like any other move on a ten plus, whatever happens like it, it happens just as you want it to. On a seven to nine, they do it, but they come back with serious demands later. And then on a miss, they might just run away or. Yeah, they might run away or turn on you, basically. So, yeah, that's your hirelings. And so, uh, Aseru is a tracker and a warrior. So, a warrior means they can, she can help you in a fight. Um, when you deal damage while a warrior aids you, add their skill to the damage done. If your attack results in consequences, like a counterattack, the men arms takes the brunt of it. Uh... A tracker basically can help you get around. Um, when they lead the party and guide you somewhere, that's on a distant a, a journey that's lower than their skill, a, a distance distance in rations lower than, than their skill, you automatically succeed. And so basically, that's she's she she knows where this is. She's studied it enough. She's she's going to be able to, to like lead you to this place without too much trouble. Um, they can also track things. It's kind of so kind of um, it's. Basically, all the hire the hirelings do similar things to like the base classes, 
but none of them are even close to being as good as them. And so, like, they can help and kind of do things, but, like, Cress is way better at tracking than Aceru is. Like, her, um, like, you can track stuff and, like, totally just find something. She can kind of track things and lead you in the general direction of it. Like, um, mm. if you had an adept, which is like a spellcasting helper, they can kind of help cast spells, but Giles is way better at spells than any adept you're ever going to find. Which yeah. plays into the whole... Trying to heal, but it's not great. Right, yeah. Like, burglars... Burglars basically disarm traps by springing them on themselves. <laughs> essentially. <laughs> um... Yeah, like stuff like that it kind of plays into the whole like you're you're the ranger. There are other there are other people that hang out in woods and track stuff, but you're the ranger, and like you're the barbarian and you're the berserker, and um, playing out, helping and playing out that they help, but definitely not as good. It's better. To, it's way way better to have a thief than it is to have a burglar. That is a hireling. So yeah, hirelings in a big old big old nutshell for you. And so, um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a few days since the part since you um came into town and started the, the whole party. Um, yes, yeah, the um the morning of a new day, and you guys have kind of decided that this is about about the day you're going to start your journey. Akula's had some time to rest, recover, and his uh, debility has been healed, so you can um, uncheck that. Your scars have faded away, like nothing, like too like there's there's still maybe some marks or whatever, but nothing like too drastic and lasting that it's going to be a big enough deal that people aren't afraid of you because of it. They're still afraid of you, of course, but, you know, not because of the scars you got. Yep. Right. Um, and, yeah, so you guys are kind of on the edge of uh, the edge of Hamlet. Um, you've gotten a few, gotten a few, like, so, like a little, like some food, basically um, some helpful stuff from your, your whole thing. Um, add another... Two rations each, I'll say, is what you got from from everything. And yeah, so um, the three, the the four of you, because Giles is still here, of course. He's he's just hanging around, being very very quiet for some reason. He's and, really uh, drunk. Yeah, he, he's still he, he, he's still really drunk. He's still really set, really drunk, <laughs> he's really quiet. It's coming out. Yeah, yeah, hungover keeps shifting us. <laughs> Yeah, so um, the four of you are with Aseru, kind of on the edge of Hamlet, looking into the swamp. And so she looks like, she kind of like um, gives you like a look, and then just, are we ready then? Okay, we're going to start. What are you talking about? Why would we start? Because we're going into the wilderness and underground, and... <laughs> <laughs> I have I have 14 days worth of rations if we can't do this you have 14 days worth of rations I have 6 because we just got 2 rations yeah hmm? let's go we started with 10 more than if we starve to death with this much days. food on us we deserve to die <laughs> let's get going Akula steps into the swamp. Yep. Cool. Um, Let's undertake our perilous journey. Yep. And so with with Aseru there, when you undertake a perilous journey, and it's definitely less than it's definitely less than less than two days to this place. And so Aseru kind of leads you forward, going around like sheep, she, like. Um, it's kind of hard to tell which what's solid and what's not solid in the swamp. Like it's just like basically now that you're in the swamp, like pretty much like, like ev basically everything's gray with like a few shades of brown and green in it. Like there will just be like there's like just water and muck, and then occasionally it's like solid enough ground to walk on. And then um kind of like Cress, you and Aseru basically like Aseru like knows where this is and like. How to get to it, and so with your like, you kind of like help guide the party along. Like since you kind of like you kind of like looked around a little bit before, and you can recognize some stuff. So you help like basically keep everybody on solid ground as you're moving, and then cre um, and then Aseru like is like no, nope, it's the map says it's this way, so let's find the path. And so you keep moving. Um, it's about a day is like the like the time for like 
fi finding a good path and moving on it and then heading on through um and so like about like over the course of the day and so like um the morning morning goes sun rises up overhead and, and it's like when the, when the sun rises like everything's a slightly brighter gray than usual and then it goes back down and then um it kind of gets back to that norm that normal like just dark thing um you definitely hear like you like you hear stuff like as you move through and there's definitely like creatures and things but um with the help of Crescent Aseru, you kind of get through, get past stuff. You see more of those like weird big crocodiles, um, like off in the distance or whatever, and you like um get around them. And uh, kind of like towards the end of the um, close to the end of the day, maybe like a few, a couple hours left or so. Um, it, but like through like a like a thicket of trees or whatever, and there's like a like a thin line and you can see through it kind of looks like um it looks like there's some kind of structure like, like that's like built up and kind of tall um like the trees are like pretty tall around this area and they're kind of blocking most of it but like through like like a hole kind of in the, in the tree line you can see like something that looks it's not it's definitely not trees like off like kind of um in front of you maybe like uh I got, I got like hundred yards or so. I approach carefully. Yeah, um, the gr you, they'll group like you um keep kind of keep moving forward. As you get into it, um, it looks. Go back out. Um, as you get up close, it looks it's, it looks like a uh. To us players, it it resembles it's like it looks like a Mayan pyramid kind of, like it's like a like up like that, and then like it's like a, kind of like a flat thing at the top with like a kind of like a little like, a little, like maybe like an altar or like just something coming out of the top top up there, but yeah, it's like very angular, very like like just coming out of it, like weird like just things like it'll be like flat and then just like some sort of like like uh like little like plat platform or something and then just kind of go to the right and then come back up like it looks weird but yeah it's like this big structurally like building like pyramidish kind of thing i mean i think we just sacrifice crests on the sacrificial altar <laughs> i mean it's the only natural thing to do <laughs> um yeah, i just get closer Unless, unless someone puts their hand on me, um, yeah. Like as you like, as you like, you kind of come up to it and like take a like a minute or two to just like take it all in. Um, Sarah like takes in a sharp breath and just like found it. Like a little surprise, but, like more than just like, yeah, I knew this was here. I'm just it's seeing it is a thing to her. Like, yeah. I guess I go up to the top just to see what I can see from there. I would like to um, use my new skills. Well, as you get closer to it, it's um, it's definitely it, there's not like stairs going up to the top. It's like there's as you get closer, there's like an entrance, like there's like a, like a kind of like a, an entryway with like a um. There's not really a door. It, well, there's like a like a there's like a door, but it's not like locked or anything. It's just like kind of like. It looks like two like Hole. stones kind of thing, like okay. nothing like blocking them really. And um, yeah. Is it immediately obvious how to open it and enter? It looks like it looks like like you kind of just push it. Like there's no like handle or anything, but like okay. um, yeah. As you step forward, there's like it's like yeah. pretty pretty plain looking, and like it moves if you like touch it. Um. So, over the time since the game has started, Shar has been talking with Giles, particularly since he saw him commune with the spirit of the dead. Um, and he has shown him this chain, and like he kind of told him the story and the origins of what it oh, is. Yeah, yeah, your chain from your. Um... Mm -hmm. Whole rite of passage thing, yeah. 
Yeah, he says like, um, these are something my people make and they tie two people together, not just for this life or the next or the next, but through all lives across all worlds. There is someone I believe who has not been given his right chance to move on to the next life. And he made this chain with me. And so like over time, I get him to, uh, I think I think he like, I don't know, I'd have to actually ask him. But <clears throat> even just from observing him that one time. Yeah, I have, yeah you're just like, like you can talk to I dead have, people. Yeah. I have a dead person and- I have taken a minor <laughs> move, heirloom, which lets me consult the spirits that reside within my signature weapon. However, I don't have a signature weapon. Instead, I have this particular heirloom for a very particular spirit. Um, and yeah, so I mean, just to see. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, we can make we can make that into this into your chain. That's that's really cool, actually. I, yeah. I feel like that's like a pretty straightforward change. Mm -hmm. Um. Um, so yeah, I'm going to consult the spirit that, I don't know if resides in is quite right, but... Right, yeah, well, it's like, it's, the, the chain's like so, like, connected to the two of you that it almost is like you both are, like, your spirits yeah. are within the chain, like, or, yeah, whether it's actually, the, whether, um... Yeah, you know, it's it actually it in it, me. or it's just you kind of feeling it, like, something's, there's something different, like, there is definitely something about the chain that's, like bigger than yourself yeah okay cool so yeah put, uh -huh. we can put so it's that. 2d6 plus charisma yes that's weird 10 nice you're talking with it you're like hey man how's it going <laughs> dead so so i'm, I'm specifically well i mean i don't know if i'm specifically consulting mm -hmm. yeah it's like this would be the first time I've like really attempted this. Mm -hmm. to talk with this guy. Oh, yeah, the moves, the moves basically opening your mind from apocalypse world. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Um, cool. Um, but I, I was kind right, of yeah. So as you, you're you're talking with Giles about the chain and like kind of like telling him the kind of telling the story about it and just how it's um yeah since you saw him talk to that spirit like. You've been thinking about it a lot, and you feel like there's something like this chain was bond bonded the two of you together. And as you, yeah, you're like holding onto the chain, and um, I guess what does it look like as this as the whatever's within like whatever like empowers this chain and makes it like different and like the kind of spirits with like the the energies that dwell within it. Like what does it look like, what does it look like when they tell you like what it what, about something like what they know um i guess yeah, like, so, just, like I'll, I'll still tell you like what the information is but like what is it like yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. the theme yeah. of it like what it, yeah so it's got the half it's like half iron half steel or half silver half steel mm -hmm. um alternating chains and so I, I think he like meditates um with it and um he sees the scene around him has mostly normal, but it's also kind of like um, ring vision from the Lord of the Rings movies. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and I think like the spirits come out of like the one particular type of chain link while he's doing that. I think to everyone else, they just see the uh, chain like start floating and hovering there around his neck. Yeah, so like it's like, because you, you wear it, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like as you're like sitting there, like focusing, it just kind of like like floating a little bit above him, just like doing like moving, like moving slightly, almost like a breeze is like yeah. pushing it or something like that. But yeah, um, so as you you like you start meditating and focusing, and you know, when you open your eyes again, like the world is just like super intensified, like everything like when, when, if something like moves, like it just like 
like trails something trails behind it and like a bird flies overhead and like the sound just like echoes in your mind and like yeah you see your group with you but like also like things that aren't there like um as you look around and like you kind of like start, start, start focusing on these things that like weren't there before it looks like there's like people walking around um and like they look different and like because like like uh, Cress and Akula and Giles, they all look like they're they're solid forms and like when they move they're a little weird looking, but like they're definitely there. And these other like humanoid looking forms are like very ghostly, very like pale, like almost like it's just like like um like mist that's just like concentrated so much that it took it took a shape and it's like walking like they're like a bunch of like forms walking around. And like kind of moving towards the the pyramid and and then moving away from it. Um, I think I just I think I just ask who are these like. Mm -hmm, yep. Yeah, like you just ask and, um, who are these people? Yeah, and so um, you look up overhead and you see like the sun like starts like moving way faster than usual and then like speeds up and just like keeps moving around and like yeah like the people like the people themselves speed up too. And you look around, like the um the swamp, like the trees and everything, like have taken like an odd shape, and like they look, like the swamp trees are like mostly dead, mostly like weird growths and things. But like the trees you see in this weird vision, look like pretty like strong tall oak trees or whatever, and slowly they like start to sink and like tilt and whatever, and um you can tell it's almost, like this is like the passage of time basically as like things move. Like, like everything's moving really, really fast around you. Um and then you see um this like orb almost, like kind of like next to like the sun, like above you, like like as you like as uh, it's like moving around going really fast and like cycling through days. It looks like almost like there's the sun and then another like basically like a black version of the sun like splits apart from it and then shoots and like it's like comes down and goes into the pyramid and like you can see it like almost like go through the stone and go into the gr into the ground below it and like sink down and it, it kind of eventually dissipate out of your vision but you see like it went down like, through the pyramid and, and like down into the ground below it and um you get a sense that like like just something like you like like basically what you saw like a few hundred years from like passed by in an instant and something like came out of like this energy ish form came out of the sky and like into this pyramid. And then if I like you like snap back into reality. It rests here, I think is all he says. What? I guess I say or like like you, you you've been you've been quiet for like a little while, like what was that? Cool is on top of the pyramid right now. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, yeah, um, I just tell her. I, I saw it. It's here. Her eyes kind of like light up a little bit, but she's like, "Yes." Did I get any kind of impression of health, or was it like too alien to even like kind of apply that concept to? Um, of health. Yeah. Said her. Um, I guess it seemed, it looked like this was, like, resting. Like, it was, like, it it, it didn't, like, come and, and go. It didn't, like, it, like, almost, like, it looked like this was, like, a final, like, thing that it was doing, like, to just stop somewhere. So, it was still, it still felt, like, powerful, but, like. Okay, so, hibernating, sleeping, or dying? Of those, if I got an like, impression between all those, fine, like, like, like a final resting place, definitely. Final, final, like, okay. yeah. So yeah, I do. I do tell her it's like yes, it's mm -hmm. it's here. And... Yes, yes. And she's like, kind of like nods, like, like again, like a like, like I knew it was here, and I'm sh I, I knew we were gonna find it, but yes, I'm I'm super glad we actually did find it. <laughs> um. And so uh, Akula was trying to climb the pyramid. Yeah. 
Okay. So it's possible. It's a little like weird. And so Um so yeah, you you kind of like step up to it and like get a look around it. Um how are you going to like climb it? Uh I'll use a use of venturing gear. Okay. Whatever climbing stuff would help me in there. Yeah, sure. So, I love how you play this game and you use five uses of adventuring gear and it's just five uses of rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got five ropes in here. <laughs> it turns out my thing of adventuring gear was actually just 150 feet of rope. Who knew? <laughs> I mean, I could still roll something, like my strength to pull myself up. Yeah, I think spending that is like, I'm um, good. Like you, you pull out some climbing gear, and um, kind of like put it on. Like maybe it's like, uh, it's just, like like stuff you put, like put on in like some like pythons and like, some things just to help you climb up, and um. Yeah, with that you're able to actually like kind of get your way up too, and like and like I said, there's like all these, all these weird outcroppings and like things jutting out of it, and so like you like kind of climb your way up like a sh like nearly sheer cliff ish kind of thing, and then find a like, big thing that you can like climb up a few other things too, and then like uh, like an angled pyramid thing that you like kind of like pull your way up with with like a, two pythons or whatever. Um, and yeah, eventually you get to uh, you get to the top, and um, yeah, it's like um, it all kind of comes yeah, it kind of comes to like this flat, like maybe like ten by ten square at the top. Um, and yeah, it's definitely like um, and like once now they're up here, it's definitely like an altar, or at least like a like an altar, or at least like a like a a thing built for something else, like a worshipish kind of thing, um. There is a. It's like a little uh, like. Yeah, so there's a, like like a like four four like small pillars and then like a like a ceiling kind of like over this like stone like like like, the, like, um, like a thicker stone pillar in the center and then a large bowl. And in the bowl, there are. 30 sapphires. <laughs> it's 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 150 wish rings, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Um it's um in the bowl there are like it's basically like full of uh skulls. And like they're if they might have been real at some like human they're they're, they're shaped like hu like like humanoid skulls. And so, like, they might have been real at some point, but, like, by now, they're, like, pretty, like, they're, like, essentially stone. Uh, and the bowl is just built into the altar out of stone? Yeah, it's, like, it's, like, a pillar, and then it comes up, and, like, the top of it is basically this, like, pretty big bowl, like, a, like a big mixing bowl, essentially. And then, um, yeah, there's, like, skull, like, yeah, there's, like, a, a collection of skulls, like, I try to take the skulls out of the bowl. Okay. Um. Yeah. When you reach into it and like try to pull one away, um, it's like they're all like connected almost like, and so you just like yank it out. It's like it's like rocks basically that are like it's almost like you're pulling like an arm off of like a like a sculpture or something like that. Like you just pull away like rock from rock, and so yeah. um. Yeah, I say you are. Yeah. How about you defy danger with your strength? Thirteen. Got it. Yep. So um when you grab the skull, you hear like this echoing like groan kind of like just not like that you like you like you hear it, but it's not like coming through your ears, like it's just kind of like in your senses 
but yeah, you like pull away a piece of the skull and it just stops, and yeah, you have like most of a skull in your hand. And it, it feel it feels almost it feels like a rock, basically like a fist, like a, a skull sized rock. It's like heavy. Put it in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> I got a souvenir, guys. I don't know. I mean, uh, what else to do with it? Um, we'll call it Fraggle Rock. <laughs> I'll, I'll just climb down. So I don't see anything. Oh, well, I guess I'll just kind of discern realities. Okay. Yeah, so you stand up and kind of get a view of what you can see from um, this height. Yeah, and also of the altar. Okay. If there's anything I missed. Oh. See, a five does not get you any questions. What it does get you is something XP. else. It gets you XP. That's right. Um, so as you, like, you're kind of, like, standing up there. You, like, um, have the skull, and then, oh, yeah, you, then you, you put it in your bag. And you're kind of, like, looking around. And it's just a good view. You don't really um, get too much out of it, but that um, the four of you that are still down on the ground, um, I, you're, I assume like like probably just chatting or whatever, just like kind of get waiting waiting for a cool to get down before you go inside. Maybe just talking. Maybe um, I don't know. Shar will be talking about what he saw or not. But as you guys are just like kind of down here waiting. Um, there's like a small, uh, like, basically you feel like a small, or like, like the ground start to shake a little bit underneath you, like not like a, like a big earthquake, but just like a little tremor, just like a like a, like the trees around you like shake a bunch, like one that's like one that was like basically pretty much dead like falls over, and it's kind of like breaks apart because it's like dry and well not no it's not dry at all it's a swamp it like falls over and just like <laughs> against the ground. Um, yeah, it's like a small tremor that lasts for like maybe like 30 seconds or so and then um, stops. They climb down the pyramid. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're climbing gear. Like you, you're able to get down pretty, pretty easily. Yeah, there's, yeah, like I said, there's like a bunch of like other things to help. Like you basically just need the climbing gear for like the weird parts where it's like nothing else, nothing to grab onto, or like pr like pretty sheer. But yeah, there's like other stuff you can like jump down to or whatever. So, yep, yeah, you get down from the pyramid and you can um meet back up. Do you show them your cool new toy? I do. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's great. <laughs> what did you guys find? You're muted, oh, Seth. you're muted, Seth. You're muted. I ask you where you found that. <clears throat> oh, on the top of the altar. You you removed something from it. Yeah. Kind of shrugging, like ah. Oh, I, I believe I that, saw it. You think that was best? Right. My my vision was of this ball or whatever it was kind of going right through what I imagine would be the center and the top of the pyramid mm -hmm. where one might expect an altar to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it went, it went right through the, yeah, it went right through the altar, basically like, it was like a straight line through like the, the top of it yeah. and then down through it into the ground. So did you guys find an entrance or were you just not doing anything while I was up there? <laughs> was the entrance is right there. We were no. not disturbing the sacrifices to ancient gods. I'm gonna go check out the doorway. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's like a maybe like one and a half like human size. So like, uh, Char is maybe like it's maybe like a like a less than a foot or so taller than Char, but like for um the rest of you, it's like pretty tall. Um. Mm -hmm. And it looks like yeah, it's like it's almost like these doors are like hanging from something. They're like they look like they're floating, but like they're like 
Um, above you can see like maybe like a like a, like, a, like another like piece of stone or something that's like like gripped onto it, and so it's like they're kind of like hanging here, and like there's no like handles or anything, and so if you like put your hands against it, like they like you give a little tug, it just like feel, they, they kind of like swing in place a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm ready. Got like all my backpack on or whatever. Whatever. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll. Yeah, I'll go inside then. Cool. Okay. Um. Yeah. So you. I think I like uh, grab you on your shoulder and like say, "Let me go first. We don't know what's." All about. right. So, so you're going first. Yeah, I was gonna. Cool. Yeah. So um, you um, yeah, you walk up to those like the weird hanging drawers and kind of like push your way, push your way through them. Um, they like slide back, almost like you hear like above like the like turning of stone, like almost maybe like stone wheels, like like, and then uh, like the doors like slide back kind of. And then um, eventually they, they, they like they hit something and it's like and stop and then like almost like it's like there's like a track they like and then turn a little bit and go start like wheeling away again and slide kind of into the um, like this hall and then so in front of you like there's this big open uh, this big open space and the, the light yeah, the light from outside um, it's it's pretty it's dimming a little bit and then it wasn't very very bright to begin with and so like you can only see like a little ways into this um, space before it's just pitch black. Like to check the walls if there are any torches or any any light sources that might still be usable. Um, there's uh, the like the, like the sconces for like a light source to be, but yeah, there's definitely nothing here like now that there's like that could be usable. It's like yeah, like, like I feel like some like stone like like things coming out of the walls where you would put something to to light, but yeah, like there's like, yeah there's nothing in it or like a torch sitting out anywhere. Don't worry, guys. Okay. I have this cantrip for it. I have a cantrip for this. That's what I'd say about Claire. I think I think Giles has light, so. I guess we could probably say he, <laughs> like, he steps from his hangover enough to cast light. I guess we'll we'll, we'll play his character for him a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, you find you find like a, like a. Go away, spam bots. Yeah. Use him. Um. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, so you, you yeah, find like a yeah. like a piece of a log or something like that, and like like a big enough like thing that um, and then Giles casts um casts his light on it. Um, I should like the distance on it, just a idea for it. I think it's like short. Is I think it's like a, a short range or about as bright as a torch. Okay. Yep, yeah, so like about like a short range in front of you, like 10, 15 feet or so. Is it but yeah. that makes an object light up? Um, yeah, I think it's, yeah, an item you touch glows with arcane light. It's, it's, it's the same as the cleric one. Let's have him do my sword. Okay. Cool. Super bright, awesome sword. Yep, and so there's like, like a, it, it, basically it's, it looks like a torch light um, is like kind of surrounding the, um, your group. But there's no heat or anything. It's just like a, a little like aura of light, and so you guys can move in. Um, All right. Yeah. So I think what we should do is have a conversation about gods. So, press. What is Tell me about the god of shadows. Uh, 
Um, so, way Cress, the stories Cress has heard of the God of Shadows is that um, it's not necessarily an evil god. It's just like a natural part. It's mm -hmm. the opposite of light, and both of these, yeah. you know, have their turns. So it's not evil. It's perhaps more dangerous because, you know, the shadows are more dangerous. Things can yeah. lurk and hide. Um, uh, also associated with like secrets and hidden knowledge. Whereas, yeah. Cool. Do I need? Um, yeah. What is their? What's their name? I was afraid you were gonna ask that. <laughs> just, just have fancy name generator open and ready. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Or or just put, or just put a couple like syllables together, and, and then we can yeah. Fantasy names. So weird. Um. God and goddess names. All right. Um, it's named Silum, S Y L, I M. Silum, god of shadows. Cool. Um. Do they um are they like have any sort of form like male, female, animal, uh something else? Um I think it's very changeable. Um it's always like it's consistently um difficult to tell exactly what's going on. Like if it's humanoid, it's in a cloak, so it's hard to tell gender or any sort of features. Um, it also can often take the form of different nocturnal animals. Um, but there's no, um, I think maybe like the two most common forms are like a, a tall cloaked figure and I don't know what's some nocturnal animal. Uh, um, an owl. Yeah, owl is the first one yes. that comes to my mind. Yep, an owl. So those are the two cool. forms that are most common in the stories of this. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do. Um. Akula, tell me about uh, Basco is a god. What are they the god of? Uh, is it Kula or Corey answering this? Either one. It it you can you can you like you can say it as Corey like to give like the ideas and then say what like Akula knows about them or. Yeah, basically however you want to describe it. Well, Corey always says that, you know, gods and goddesses and deities are just projections of humanity on events they can't explain. Um, so there are definitely, like, supernatural forces in the world, but to what extent they care about humans or humans can mm -hmm. control them even relate to them in any meaningful way is is debatable they're all in reality they're all kind of just very alien um and most of the time not concerned with human happiness or life at all um so fasco yep their name is fasco and then what are they what do they what is their domain Um, Fasco is a name that some people give to a generalized will, um, to, it's a little, it's a little related to the God of Shadow, um, but it's more about 
I'm just laughing because all my ideas are so cliche. It's it's more about an, any any sort of form that that establishes itself in 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 reality. Its its drive is to um, destabilize that. So not necessarily kind of like uh like uh like chaos or like disorder. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's more okay. about. It's not like total chaos. It's just, yeah. it's, see. it's it's keeping everything kind of more homogenized. It wants to see, it wants to see see things connected, and you know the barriers between things, sort of, um, not necessarily completely destroyed, but just just to keep energy flowing through reality. So, okay, um, so like the, um, like the overseer of like conformity. Uh, more, more just any sort of structure that would keep. Okay. Keep things from being, um, connected. You can, I mean, so I guess the the more tangible, less sort of um, vague description of this would be like um, social structures that become too rigid or boundaries between countries that become too defined or... Um, so it's the god of these or it's breaking these things down? It's the... It's, it's, it's the... It's, it's the divine will to um, keep these structures semi-permeable. Okay, cool. And I think it often comes to um, seers in visions as sort of a mass of tentacles and eyes and teeth. And, cool. Uh, more like, I guess it's kind of like... Um, bacteria and sort of things with like little phalanges, but um, how that gets understood is, uh, is up to the, up to the person having the vision. Cool. That is, that's really cool. Dark and terrible. Heck yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a force of all sorts of destruction mm-hmm. ultimately. Yeah. But, um, at the like same that. time, you know, it's breaking down berries of all kinds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, dr- drill down to the core, it's about like destruction, but bringing it up is more about like keeping th- keeping things like keeping things like together by making sure nothing's too rigid. Like, and, and it goes for the boundaries between different worlds and reality. Yeah, like its goal isn't to see everything to become one homogenized thing its goal is to keep um passage through those things awesome so um i I assume people have projected names like the the uh connector or the Mm -hmm. boundary breaker or the um yeah flow Yeah, yeah Master. <laughs> Sweet. So yeah. With all those with all those happy images in mind, you guys um like walk forward with your like the, the, the sword lit up into um basically like a big antechamber. Um and as you look up, like it's weird, like so the, the outside of the pyramid is like a pyramid. It's like kind of like four walls like laid on their like kind of angled and coming up the inside almost looks rounded like it's a big like circle and you're like walking like like walking into it like on like the bottom and yeah as you look up like the, and you kind of point the light like the sword up as high as you can go like yeah like everything you can see is like the walls round up and um like Kind of like carved, like basically like the whole, um, like all around the circle are like carvings and like 
it's like depictions of different like things happening and yeah so you see like a bunch of like tentacle carved like kind of like carved out of like this like weird like this like this orb that you're standing inside of um like tentacles like kind of coming up around like up the curvings um like things that like could be like curtains almost or, or, like like a um like kind of like, like, like cloaks like 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 wavy like like really well carved like 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 cloakish kind of things like in like other spots like yeah it's just like random almost like th strewn about randomly throughout all of these areas and in the center is a um it's a like another like carving and this is it's probably like, this is like the main like place people would go to to like worship or do something um it's a a lock it's like it's like a carving and so like it's like an actual one but like it's like a lock that's been like broken in half and like the two, the two pieces like are like uh laying next to each other and then um like like st and still all in like like carving like someone spent a lot of time and like really really skilled doing it um they've shown like basically like the the like the shadow of this lock like out of like out of in in a carving like piercing into this um like a like a small like like a city almost like basically like, like enough carving to like you know it's like it's like a like civil it's like it's like a civilization or something like that like it's supposed to represent that and so like, the shadow is like kind of like piercing into it and like things are coming out of it and so like basically yeah basically from all of the imagery around you you can you can tell that it's like dedicated to um Silum and Fasco and yeah those the two of them are often like put together because like the god of shadows like is often associated with like secrets and um like hidden things and fasco wants to like spread those around and keep everything all together and so yeah like this this all this like, i guess this altar down here is like looks to be i guess for those of you that like kind of like think deeply about it um it looks like this is like a like a place dedicated to like breaking apart civilization this lock is like shooting almost like it's like shooting waves at like like this like piercing beams at the city and like the city is like and like breaking apart almost and um yeah so it looks like this is like a, like a worship chamber almost where you would come here and um do religious things as religious people do i poke around the area for treasure mm -hmm. Um, yeah, to, uh, yes. um, would anyone like to, uh, discern realities so we can, uh, it sounds like, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for the, I'm asking our companion if she knows about any connections that Tortula might have to, um, Particularly Pasco. Char is far more familiar with Pasco. Uh, I feel my. Yes, you did. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, she 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 like sp spends a little like, while like looking at it, and she's like, she looks a little confused, but like um eventually like uh kind of like leans up to look at you, and um. There's, uh, from what I would, when I was speaking with the people that had looked in, like, looked into Tortula, and there was some connection to deities, but there was never anything concrete. It was just more stories that came from some, came from some, something that came from something else, and just that was taken on as their own wise tales, but this is, I don't know, this is strange to me. It makes sense, though. I guess if it, when it comes down to it, Tortula was a shapeshifter. 
Shortula never had anything concrete about it, and it would just take on things as it willed. So I suppose it makes sense that it would be in the place of Fasco and Silum. Would it have been the same or just a, a certain tub, do you think? I, I am I am no clergywoman. I am not a philosopher. I don't know. Um, and yeah, as you guys are walking, like, um, kind of like speaking, um, Akula's like po kind of poking around, look, look at, taking a look at things. It's like, where is the treasure? I know there's one here. Come on. Um, and just kind of walk around. You feel like there's a uh, like a tentacle carving that's like kind of coming out of the wall and like goes around the little like down the orb and like onto where you can walk. Like the bottom of it's like kind of flat, so you're not like walking on a carved thing and so like it's like an orb that comes into like a flat plane at the bottom and um this tentacle carving out of the ground like comes out like down past the rounded part onto this flat plane and um you kind of like stumble over it like you don't trip you just like hit it as you're walking and it, it, you, like you kind of keep taking a couple, couple steps forward and like like when you hit it it like moved a little bit and starts like turning and so like, you want to hear it like start to hear like the very quiet like grinding of stone against stone as it like moves and it goes in back and it kind of like goes from the, the flat part back into the rounded plane like this the rounded orb part and then once it like it's almost uh it's really hard to see but like there's almost like a slot for it and you hit and it kind of goes into that slot and once it goes in there um anyone who didn't notice that small noise before definitely notices it now as like the stone grinding gets louder and like just like fills the room with like that and to the right of you um like the orb like opens up almost and like just starts moving like it might be going behind it under it it just like something like opens up and it's like like this like, rounded hole starts to appear in the orb to the right and do, 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 do. you hear Let's see what you hear. How about one of these? In log beast. book okay um so yeah it's a um like yeah the, this hole kind of opens up and you see like it's very it, it, it's through the hole it's like dark and black but um as you're looking over to the hole as it opens up like it's almost like the black blackness of this area like kind of moves out and you can see like because you're uh the light from your sword is like just barely reaching it and you can see like on the edge of it like dark like almost like a dark like mass like move like into the light and then pull back and then you hear like a like noise from that hole and then um from like at that point like nothing too much has it happens after after you hear that noise it goes quiet I investigate. I think. Yep. Um. Yeah, I just I walk over with the light, maybe like shine it up towards the hole or something like that. Yep. Um. Yeah, and so you walk you walk up to it and like kind of like point po poke your sword into that like the, the hole in the orb. Um, and like just like barely on the outskirts of the light, you see like uh, the light, yeah, the light appears to like this like this normal darkness, and then on the very edges of it, you see like this the black mass like receding like, away from your light. I just keep looking for treasure. I don't know what else. To say. <laughs> What okay, size you, is this in, hole? Yeah, in this in this in, in this room you don't you don't find anything. 
<laughs> Leave the temple then. <laughs> what size is this? What size is this hall? Okay, Akul, Akul is heading for the exit. Yeah. I mean, um, um, Aseru like kind of like turns and like, where are you going? There's no treasure. What else is there to do here? There's this. We we haven't even gotten into it yet. Hi. Yeah. Okay. How do we get into it? And she like like she motions at the hole that like opened up and like there's no way I'm leaving after this after seeing this. You want to go down in the hole? Yes. I didn't realize it was people sized. Oh yes, sorry if I didn't describe that properly. But yeah, it's like a big, like 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 it's like an opening, almost like a, like a um like a walkway, pretty much. Like it's a it's like a circular, but like yeah, you can definitely like fit into it. And like it's like I it's go like in a, the hole. Yeah. I think as I you think like as you like that. yeah, as you like pu pu push the sword into it, it's like a path that like goes. Um, yeah, I would I would have kind of followed the black tentacly mass. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm taking a light with me. <laughs> um. Yep. Yeah, so the sh yeah, you um yeah you keep moving forward and kind of regroup and um uh keep walking. And so as you keep moving forward, like you see, like the, yeah, like just, again, like at the very very edges of your light, like the like the mass of like darkness, like like inching away, like you keep walking, and then it just like very edge key in inching away and inching away. Um and then um as you keep walking forward, um it you feel like a slight incline to the path as you like start to move down a little bit. And um from ahead of you you hear like uh kind of like shambling almost like a kind of noise from like ahead of you. It's like Fairly quiet right now, um, but yeah. You, um, if you keep moving, that's like kind of what you're hearing and sensing at the moment. Um, the 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 walkway itself is like pretty like bland looking. It's just like stone, like it's, it's like a circular kind of like this, the same idea of the the room. It's like a circular walkway and then a flat thing for you to walk. And it's yeah, it's going down now. Um. And yep. So um, do you guys just uh, keep moving forward? Yep. Yep. I think so. Okay. Um. Yep. As you get into uh. The um the incline like. It's it, it doesn't get too steep. It just like it um, just like like a few degrees. You you can like, it's enough that you can definitely tell you're like. Heading downward, and so um, at the um, at a certain point, at the very edge of your light, you can see like the your small like smallish like your, your enclosed walkway like opens up again and looks like it's another room. Um, and if you like keep pressing forward, um, the room uh, it's like. It's a, this 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 one's like a, a normalish shaped room, like a square kind of room. Um, Would I have gotten the impression that we're actually out from underneath the pyramid? Um, yeah, you're definitely like underground. You're definitely under it now. You're walk you're walking for like a few minutes or so, and like down, and like it wasn't completely straight. It like maybe like turned a little bit, and then turned, and kind of kept going down more. Um, yeah, you're definitely under underground now. And as it opens up into the room, you see um, uh, some like it's kind of like just past your light, but in like the center of the room, you see like shapes moving around. And so like, you can't quite tell what they are, but you see like movement in the darkness that's like right, just past your light. Multiple shapes. Yeah. Um. I move forward. Oh, my 
had a spellcaster. <laughs> <laughs> if only you had a wizard. <laughs> Do you want to pause it here? You can pick it back up when we have Giles with us. Sure, if you guys are good with that. Leave it on mm -hmm. the finger to see what the heck these things are. Either way. I was just making a joke about how like all I can really do is run up mm -hmm. and stab them with myself. <laughs> I can <laughs> shoot things. <laughs> cool. Um Yeah, I think we're good to kinda like cliffhanger it here and then leave it at a point for you guys to get into this encounter, whatever it is, next time. So we bring up uh, these special moves, and we can do our end of session. So let's talk about bonds. Uh, do any of you feel like a bond has been resolved? I bet all of you at least did one with Giles, right? I mean, I mean everyone had, no. a, had, a, I had mean... a great moment with Giles this session. <laughs> yeah, I talked so much about nature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys had the conversation about like the the wildlife sanctuary and how you're like raising money for it, and like yeah, it was a whole big thing. He, uh -huh. he did teach me how to commune with the dead, <laughs> <laughs> which would resolve my bond with him. <laughs> talk talk about it with really act, and actually talk about him with it next time, and yeah, we'll yeah. <laughs> we'll, flash, we'll flash back to the actual scene. Okay. Because it, it would have pretty much happened as soon as they were past the bridge. Mm -hmm. Is yeah, it going to be like the first it. thing I did in this session was have that conversation with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, and we, yeah, you guys can have like a flashback conversation for that if you want to next time. Um. So, um, in actuality, um, uh, no bonds or. A clan is dissolved. Okay. Even though we kind of drew on our brawl. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's look at uh, how about your alignment? Anyone fulfill their alignment move? Yes. Several times. What was yours again? Teach someone the ways of my people. Got it. Cool. I think I'd like hit that four times or something. <laughs> yep. All right. So you get you get an XP. Uh, a cool request. Oh. Uh, I did not. Okay. All right. The deer velvet. Unless you count the werewolves. Oh, there were people. I didn't really make a brutal example of them more than anyone else did, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't to terrify. The alignment move. Make a brutal example of somebody to terrify others. Because <laughs> uh, I was gonna say you did like rip a skull out of um, a altar to some kind of god. <laughs> <laughs> That's making an example of someone for sure. Someone. We're getting some we're getting warm. We're not quite hot yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. So let's do the questions then. Um, Thought about killing the old guy for no reason just to get the XP. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, old man, you gotta die. <laughs> All right. Um. So, did we learn something new and important about the world? Yes. Yeah. I agree. About this very strange creature. Mm -hmm. yeah, cool. Yep. So we get an XP for that. I mean, we made our map. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that too. Yeah, we got a, we covered a lot of like the area. Um, did we overcome a notable monster or enemy? Yeah. Where was again, that like, cool, but not like notable. Like, mm -hmm. like oh, if that ghost wasn't the... notable, then the werewolves definitely aren't. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And then, yeah. Did we, loot a did we loot a memorable treasure? Not yet. Well, we have a skull. <laughs> yeah. Skull we, have we have friendship. <laughs> That's, the, That's the most important treasure of all. <laughs> you found, you found, yeah, you found, you found, you found a cool elf chick that led you to the temple. I mean, she's basically the protagonist in the new Star Wars movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cannot confirm nor deny the relations of any of my NPCs to characters in other forms of media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, totally cool. cool. So that was session two of Kismet and our awesome Dungeon World game. Um, thank you for watching because it was super fun. Um, they can go around the circle and 
uh, give any what you call it shout outs if you would like to shout anything out. Uh, Seth, do you have any final words? Um, just that the sand elves should have these squarish flying horses that look remarkably like speeder bikes from episode seven. <laughs> <laughs> Um, beyond that uh, thanks again everyone for playing I had fun um, mm -hmm. got a lot of cool stuff going I, I like our gods a lot too That's, yeah that, yeah, those are really cool I, I'm, I'm excited to see how they're going to play into the whole thing I'm doing with the Abyssal Lord mm -hmm. I really like coming up with gods and like having other people come up with like I gods and like want to and stuff kill my, I just kind of want to kill Sharkozy right now and make a cleric who is a god of uh, uh, Fasco. <laughs> <laughs> Fasco, because Fasco is legit as fuck. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I like Fasco a lot too. Yeah. I like Fasco. Um, yeah. If I were to make a cleric, he would totally be on the side that like Fasco is responsible for all of life, and like he is the creator of life. The rest of the gods were content to just let the universe be and mm -hmm. like have it be with their domains. And Fasco's like, no, this cannot do. Yeah. So he created a life to mix the entire universe up forever. Mm -hmm. But um, I saw Shark. They're both really cool. Alive, and I also want to play a druid. So uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll stick with Sharkosi because he's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find me occasionally streaming at twitch.tv slash Tahoe Biker, the, um, with a Y instead of an I. Um, I stream game development for the most part, not terribly often, and I do it at terrible hours for the, uh, the United States. <laughs> awesome, cool. Uh, Sarah, do you have any final words? Uh, nope, just thanks the game, everyone. Mm -hmm. And I am nowhere online, <laughs> so. You will be. Perhaps someday I'll stream, but not today. Have a spot to talk about it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Something's going to happen eventually. <laughs> cool. Yeah, thank you for playing also. Uh, and Corey. Now, uh, be quick, because I think Giles is a lot to talk about this time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm Renfa on Twitch. Uh, if you really want me to stream, I will. But... Other than that, yeah, good game. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. GG. Yeah, um, Josh, if you want to say anything, please feel free to interrupt. But uh, I am Tux. This is, uh, you should know because you're on my channel. If you don't, and I don't think you understand how Twitch works, but that's okay because you're here anyways. And so if you liked what you saw, there is a little heart that you can follow this channel and check more of our games out. Uh, there's also a Twitter down below where that's will be where I say, hey, we're going live and you should watch. And if you like games and tabletop games of any kind, you're in the right place and stick around because more of that where this came from. But yeah, thanks to everyone for showing up. This was very much fun. We get yeah, a big lore episode, which early sessions are usually like that, where you just keep coming up with the crap, and then, and then I take it and I mess around with it, and then I throw it back at you. All your awesome creations, I throw back at you in terrifying ways because this is dungeon world, and nothing's safe. You, remember, you should remember that. So yeah, I think we can call it a great session, and we shall see you hopefully next week.